Many years ago, when I started using fixture tables, I bought a lot of these round stop pins. Back then, I thought they gave me the ability to make more while also saving money. Unfortunately, I found some problems with these pins. These problems and several others inspired me to make my own welding tables and fixtures for my company Fireball Tool. So I came up with my own fixtures to solve them. But first, let me show you the problems I have with the pins and then the solution that I came up with. When it comes to fixturing, this simple pin is probably the one of the most common purchased items on my website. I don't know why a lot of you guys are buying this. It has some serious limitations. So this is a Build Pro round pin. It goes into this hole just like that. Pretty simple. Because there's a tolerance in between this hole and pin, it rocks back and forth. Well, when you bump a piece of material up to it, it canters backwards. And it doesn't really sit 90 degrees to the table having this rock. Now, because this plate steel is 5 8 this isn't so bad. But when you start going on to the thinner tables, like this quarter inch, less expensive tables, this really starts getting pronounced. And this is supposed to be a stop. But there's just a lot of wiggle room in here. Stop it. It also doesn't help you with clamping. When you put the pin in the hole and you want to put the material up next to it, if you want that material and the pin to stay together, it's quite difficult to actually clamp to. The clamp doesn't want to stay on the pin. It's really hard to use it as like a shim because it likes to roll around on your work material. One more problem with the pin is if you try to go into a surface, it wants to wiggle its way out and fall out of the hole. So with all those problems being exposed when you use these things, I came up with a better solution. Square pins make everything better. When it goes into the table, you have a flat surface on a flat surface and a flat surface. Now I can clamp to that pin. That's number one awesomeness. This pin is removable, which means you can unthread it. So now you have a threaded hole. Basically, this is now a nut. So when you bring it over to a fixture and you want to go horizontal with it, you can just use a regular three quarter bolt or five eighths bolt and you can lock it into place and it won't come out. That also sucks up that flat spot, creating a perfectly 90 degree corner. In reality, you're probably not going to use it in that condition all that often. Probably going to keep the pin into the bottom, which you still get a little bit of wiggle room because it just has to be there. Why would we use a single pin? Well, it's designed to be used in small spaces. It's designed to get into a little nook and corner. It's really not supposed to be the main stop. This is what you should be stocking up on. This is a two by four fence block. And as you can see, it has two pins in the bottom that are also threaded. I suggest clamping them in with a little screwdriver. So as you put this into the table, it locks two holes into position. This can no longer twist or turn where the single pin will twist on you. Because it's a block, you can now clamp to it. One stop allows you to align with the axes of the table. You can clamp to the surface. This does rock back and forth. But what you should be using is this edge right here. Okay, so by turning it this way, that is a perfect 90 degree corner that doesn't twist or move. This is the proper way to use this fence block. If I wanted to space this tubing out on any dimension from one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to the width of the table, I can make this block land on these numbers because these pins on the bottom are offset. We can set them up opposite to each other. They're at set at six inches apart. So if I wanted a five incher, I'd spin the block 90 degrees, drop it in the hole, and I would get five inches. If I want four inches, and move one hole over, flip it around. There's four inches. That's how you do it. You just keep working the blocks back and forth. Now you're gonna say, Jason, what if I don't want a solid number? I want it to be in a half. This is where these babies come in. These are shim blocks. They have magnets on the side. They match perfectly up to the end of those. And now you can get any dimension you want in between. That's why when I see people use the round pins, they are just really, really, really limited on what they can do. And I don't understand why people are purchasing those in bulk. Fence blocks are where they're at. Everything's the correct size, so they match a one, two, three block. They're just really, really versatile tools. You can stack them on top of each other, creating a really tall fence. These holes in the top are for clamps. So if you need a little bit longer riser, you can go on the top of it. You can bridge, lock them together. That's a pretty good fence too. You can build a lot of stuff just like Legos. Extremely helpful. So if you need to put them on a vertical surface, you can remove the pin on one side and put them into here again. So you can bolt it into place just like that so it doesn't fall out. These can be used as a shim block to elevate your work. They're awesome for that. Another thing that you can do with them, you can arrange these fence blocks into a whole bunch of cool configurations. You can make a big long row. You can make a continuous line or a fence with it. You can set them up 
to make 90 degree corners. You can butt it up and make a T out of it, an inside corner. You can back this fence up with this one. So if you do need to clamp it, this one won't bend backwards. See like the wiggle is in there, but by putting this fence block in, it can't tilt back. So you can back it up. This requires no ball lock bolts that are really cheap to use and they're very fast. By arranging these things in a lot of configurations, you're able to set fixtures up very quickly. This is what you guys should be buying. I'd love to see you guys bulk up on fence blocks. So these fence blocks are available for a three quarter table or a five eighths table if you have that also. I'm trying to help you understand what all these fixtures are for and when to use them and why. These little pins are just designed for emergency use or in tight spaces and not your main fixturing. These guys are what you want. So if you'd like to support my growing small business, I recommend buying a t-shirt. The t-shirt I'm wearing right now is available. You can find it at the Fireball Tool website. Also, I have some great news. I have a new video where I hired three fabrication shops and challenged them to make me some simple weldments. This was a simple test to see what is more important, a fabricator with lots of experience. What's in there? <laughs> or a beginner with the best tools. Check it out now only at fireballtool.com and I'll see you guys there.